are live. Make sure you could get us both in there, please. Hi, everyone. It's Christian Portilla, the host of Meet the Mondays. I'm here with June the Barber. Um, we're going to be talking about all of the things that he's been doing here in Houston. Um, make sure that you check out the audio on Spotify and Apple Podcasts after. This video will also be on YouTube if you miss us. Um, and yeah, we're going to get started. Cisco, will you, will you count me in? Please. Thank you. Yeah, ready. Peace World, welcome to Meet Them Mondays, a show about the wins and losses on the road to success. I'm your host, Cristian Portilla, and tonight I'm in the studio with June the Barber, Monster's first official barber, the founder of the streetwear brand Sucio World, and the creator of Clipper Beasts, a platform to highlight underground barbers and unify the community. How are you, June? What's up, what's up, what's up? Thank you for having me. I'm yeah. good. Thank you so much for coming. No, I, I, parked, I packed my lunch to come out here. Are you serious? No, nah, I'm playing with you. Oh. It's, it's <laughs> all good. <laughs> what was for lunch? Uh, what did I eat today? Oh, I actually went to one of my client's restaurants. It's on the southeast side. It's called Lone Star Seafood. Mm -hmm. Fire food. Yeah. I went out there with one of my boys from the barbershop today. Have a lunch. Quick something. Nothing You're like crazy. a foodie, no? Definitely. Definitely. I'm a foodie. Uh, Chinese food and seafood. That's my go-to. That's your shit? Yeah, that's my <laughs> shit. I can't lie. So, tell me about your weekend. I saw you were promoting an event, um, Battle of the Barbers, yesterday, actually. Mm -hmm. So, what's up with that? Alright, so, Battle of the Barbers. Uh, one of my homies in College Station, Mike, uh, he hosted an event out there. I took Clipper Beats out there as a sponsor. I actually was able to take uh, one of my little homies with me. A little prospect that I have who's been cutting hair is actually in Barber College. Took him out there to get his feet wet. Um, plays, he battled, did his thing. Crazy outcome. Justin of, Flores? Yes, that's my boy. <laughs> Shout out to Jay Flo uh, out of LaPorte here in Houston. Oh, man. C crazy, a oh, crazy weekend. Definitely an emotional and crazy weekend this past weekend. Being able to see him and, like, all the other young talent that's coming out, whether it's from Houston, College Station, like, they're coming with some fire right now. Definitely a different vibe, a different energy of the new, like, the new generation of barbers coming up. You know what I mean? Yeah, Definitely I saw crazy. that you, on your IG story, you said something about how what you experienced this weekend is what gets you motivated and is the reason why you do what you do. Definitely. So I saw that he had won and he placed three He times. placed three first time battles. He had a first, a second, and a first place. Definitely. First place traditional fade, second and fastest fade, and first a student. Yes, definitely crazy. Um, How old is he? Justin, I believe, is 21 right now. He's a baby. I, yeah, he, he's a... Uh, He's somebody that I've definitely been investing energy into. Um, somebody that I see a lot of me in when I was in a bar when I was first coming up in a barber industry. Um, but just a new with a new flow, a new heat to it. Uh, but definitely he did his thing. He came out. He came out nervous. It's natural to be nervous when you go into competitions like that, especially. Um, being your first time you know still he's still a barber uh, a barber student in college right now barber college you know what i mean he's almost done with his time i think he just takes his exam and that's it he's out Damn. so being able to see him and a lot of the other um young competitors come and do their thing was something uh like i want to say like a rebirth for me it really it relighted that fire in me i was like oh i left i left that weekend coming home that drive home was like two hours but definitely a lot of thinking, a lot of planning, like like what's next or what's to come within not only him, but a lot of smaller individuals that are around me that are coming up. So being able to um, give that advice, be there, uh, some knowledge, but at the same time, give them their space and let them do them was crazy for me. Yeah, Definitely. I know that you also said that you um, had a mentor when you were coming up, mm -hmm. and I see that like now you're passing it on. Your mentor was Berto, no? Yes. Tell I us had, about Berto. Like, how'd you meet him? Uh, you I met. Him? So this is a crazy story itself. Uh, Berto is actually from the southeast side. True OG to the barber game. Uh, been putting on for many years. Uh, he is somebody that I definitely think should be mentioned when you mention Houston barbers. Definitely. Um, I was actually cutting the hair out of my garage 
and he took me out of my garage and gave me a place to cut hair at. And I've been there for, matter of fact, I did all my 20s there. I've been there for 13 years now. Um, so, man, he taught me a lot. He taught me a lot, not only in cutting hair, but on the business side, too. Mm -hmm. You know, building that credit, paying taxes and stuff like that. Something that doesn't get passed to a lot of youngsters right now. You know what I mean? I, 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 I honestly think that I was able to have the right people around me to for me to be where I'm at right now. Yeah, so, to really set you up. Yeah, definitely. So, shout out to Berto. I mean, there's other people, too, but definitely Berto has been somebody that has... Uh, definitely impacted my life whether it be with the barber career or just in business or just in life in general you know what I mean yeah definitely. and how was it that you met him though like how did so that happen? the the way I met him was I had an older cousin named Tank that was getting a haircut at the time and at the time I was young I was like Justin you know what I mean I was just coming up cutting hair in the garage cutting hair at different places um there would be people so my mom lived like four blocks away from the barber shop that I'm at now and I would get people hit me up on uh, social media and stuff like that. Yo, Southern Comfort's kind of packed right now. Are you cutting hair? I'm like, yo, I'm at the house. So I would be getting people from the shop coming over. They'll go back to the shop. Like, show at the time, I was heavy in designs. So they would go back to the shop like, yo, I just went down the streets and so-and-so. So it became like, yo, who is this guy that's cutting hair out of his garage? Um, and I remember one time cutting hair in my garage. And I remember Berto pulling up to my mom's house. Like, you know, I had the garage door open. I had, like, maybe six, seven people in line. It was jumping on a Sunday, you know what I'm talking about? And um, we talked from there. And um, I wasn't in barber college yet. I was just doing my thing, um, just cutting hair and going to school at the same time. I wasn't sure if that's something that I wanted to do at the time. But at the time, it was moving fast. It was something fast that was moving. Clients started coming in. So I just kind of rode with it and just... I knew that I had love for it, so it wasn't something that I just wanted to do. I had a passion for it. And um, we linked up, and then the, by the time you know it, I'm in a shop, 16 years old, cutting hair and doing what I was doing, you know what I mean? So who was the first person that put, like, a pair of clippers in your hand, like, that you remember? Uh, my brother, my brother's best friend, his name is Jay. Uh, he's from Second War. A lot of people know him as Jay Clippers. He doesn't cut hair now, but that's what he did. He was the first person that I seen cut hair. Because at the time, my brother was out of school. He was in school in another state going to medical school. So I linked up with his best friend, and that was like kind of my go-to brother then, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he's the first person that I saw cutting hair outside his porch in Second War. And I remember seeing him cut hair, and I was like, yo, that's fire. Because not only did he cut hair, but he had the whole swag, you know what I mean? Like, he had the kicks. The shoes, the cut, the talk, the slang. It was one of those things like dope, whatever, right? But back then, you got to remember, being a barber wasn't like cool yet. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So for me to see him and, and like the the whole image he had, it was like, yo, that's fire. So I would find myself just going to his house on a regular, staying overnight, watching him cut a lot of the clients that came in and out of his house. Hood shit. I'm talking about windows open, music blasting. He's Salvadorian, so shit was booming. Yeah. Like it was it was it was wild. <laughs> Barbers definitely got like a sauce to them. Yeah, like, definitely. You know when a man is a barber. Yeah. <laughs> out of the group of people you're like, oh he's a barber. That's the for barber sure. guy. And if he's Dominican, forget it. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, so let's talk about how you grew up. Like mm -hmm. tell me, you know, take me back, take me to your childhood. You said you're from Magnolia. Mm -hmm. So what was your upbringing like? Um you know, were you raised by your mom, your dad? Like, what was that like? Your siblings? Tell me all about that. Okay, yeah. So we grew up in Magnolia. Uh, and at that time, that was my grandma and my grandma's house. My grandparents' house. Um, and uh, all the cousins. We had, like, three families in that house. And then there was a duplex in the back where my mom and my dad stayed. And um, born and raised, uh, my mom my mom and my dad, uh, big influence in my life. Um, just... I just remember coming up, like, you know, just like everybody else, roaming the streets, running around, making sure I'm home before the lights go out, you know. My mom would drop us off early in the morning at my grandma's house. After we moved from Magnolia, Magnolia, we were in the southeast side, but every morning we'll get dropped off, like, 5 a.m., and my mom would come back and pick us up when she was off work, like, after 6 p.m., so we were everywhere with it, uh, fighting with my cousins, <laughs> doing crazy stuff, you know, stuff like that. Um, definitely... Um, I would say like the black sheep. Me and my me and my guy cousins we were always getting into trouble, just like any other yeah. kid, you know, growing up in the hood, doing you know, just doing dumb shit. Yeah. So um, 
growing up, it, it was, I'm not going to say I was poor because we were eating. We had clothes on our back, right? But at that time, uh, you know, we were kids. We didn't, we didn't know what uh, struggle was. So everything made us happy. But I'm pretty sure there was points throughout that life where, you know, maybe my mom and dad didn't have it all. But they made it, they made it happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. So definitely a good childhood. I mean, shit, everybody has their shares. Yeah. I did the shit I did, whatever it was. Uh, got my ass whooped plenty of times. <laughs> I wouldn't say that I ain't asked for it. That's for sure. You know what I mean? I definitely asked for it. Yeah. I knew it was coming when I did shit. Yeah. But I knew right from wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. But definitely, definitely, I I can't say nothing bad about my growing up. I mean, it was just like kind of everybody else's growing up in the hood. Yeah. You know, doing what you wanted to do all Being day. Being a whatever. big ass Latino family. Definitely yeah. big, and we were in this house deep and then my grandma she would take care of kids throughout the week on the weekends yeah oh man there'll be times it'd be like 10 12 of us going outside trying to figure out what we're gonna play today stuff like that definitely an outside kid an outside baby that's yeah. all we did outside i mean 24/7. that's fun though too mm -hmm. because at least like now you we don't see that a lot at nah. all with the kids being mm -hmm. out and stuff like when i see kids outside i encourage them i'm like good for them like they're yeah. playing you know they're doing shit and even still for you cutting hair like you have a non-traditional job where you're not at a desk on a screen all day mm -hmm. so like that's also conducive to like a different lifestyle you know um but we were talking about how you said black sheep your brother's a doctor your sister's a lawyer and you became a barber um and it's it's funny that you say back in the day like being a barber wasn't like the cool thing mm -mm. you know um because those jobs are also like kind of like trade jobs you know but i think when you grow up too like i don't know things start changing because now i think that someone who's a handyman or someone who could build a house or someone you know who has like these different type of skill sets especially now with the pandemic and how things are happening like you realize how important having those jobs are. Do you remember when the pandemic was happening that everybody was cutting their own hair mm -hmm. and everybody was like, yo, where's, you know, the salon, the nails, the this and that? And you really realize, like, how much you needed those people in your yeah. life. Like, how much you count on them to yeah. feel good about yourself, for them to take care of you, for you to feel some sense of normalcy. How was the pandemic like for you? The pandemic was crazy. Um, like, we definitely got shut down for, like, four months. The barber shops got shut down for four months, but uh, I didn't let that um, be a factor in my life. Cause at the end of the day, um, you gotta get it how you live. Definitely, honestly. definitely. So I mean, I I was I cutting during the pandemic. I'd be lying if I told you I didn't. Yeah. I mean, there's things were going on. Um, certain clients needed shit. Certain clients were doing stuff. So I mean. And at the end of the day, I think that's why I'm able to obtain or be able to have such a heavy clientele outside the barbershop that I would consider like my A-list clientele because of me always being available or me just making a way to make it happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, I definitely felt, yeah, definitely. Not only us as barbers, but a lot of people. I have a lot of clients that weren't able to even get their job back or whatever it may be. But um, with the pandemic, definitely we felt the, we felt the hit. Um I want to say that a lot of barbers felt the hit too, but at the same time, I like to encourage and tell the people, like, you got to be ready for a rainy day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, so was I ready for it? I definitely can't say I was, um, but that, that was able to, like, alert a lot of people at the same time, like, oh, shit, like, yeah. I haven't worked in a week. I haven't worked in two weeks. Fuck, it's been a month, two months, three months. The barbershop's down. Oh, so, you know what I mean? It became one of those things. So, I could see how um, some people were definitely affected by it. Whether, and a lot mentally, too. Because you're like, oh, shit, I can't, I can't cut hair now. So, what am I going to do? Yeah. And that goes back to, you know, me having other avenues to, you know, make money or different income coming in. You know what I mean? But, yeah, definitely the pandemic fucked a lot of shit up. You know yeah. what I mean? In the barber industry, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. And I, I do think it brought the best out of a lot of people, too, because now I see a lot of my clients who once had a dream with all this going on and stuff, and now I see them now, I was like, bro, it, it really took that to, you know, push the good out of people. And now I see some people with, like, doing stuff. A lot of my clients, like, now, like, yo, you took that to another level. And their reason was because a lot of it had to do with the pandemic and not working, so now they invested their energy into maybe their side hustle or their side job, and now that was able to flourish as well.
it's funny because I was telling you earlier before we started recording that you have like a really big hustler mentality and like I described it as we say like pilas mm -hmm. like you're already always maquineando like what's the next move how can I connect the dots here how can I make something else happen mm -hmm. how can I make you know a different income from cutting hair I noticed it in your posts I noticed it in your captions I noticed it in just like how you have your hands in different places and um, I was telling you about like that hustle mentality that you have um where did you get that from like how do you can you teach someone that or are you born with that i mean you're an aquarius too so, so um <laughs> man to be honest i wasn't i've never seen somebody get taught it but i've seen somebody uh how can we say gravitate towards it yeah and maybe feed off of it yeah um I remember growing up, uh, I was being a kid, and I used to go work with my grandpa. My dad used to wake us up early morning. Yeah, I remember, so in my mom's house, their their bedroom was at the very end. So in order for them to walk down to get to the kitchen, they had to pass our rooms up. My, my dad, yeah. my brother's in my room. My brother in my room, my brother's room, right? And I remember early morning just getting that. <laughs> Yo, if I'm up, you got to be up. Let's get, you know what I mean? Yeah. So even that... Um, being young with my little cousin Isaac and my cousin Tank and Carlos, we used to go and help my grandpa on the weekends. My grandpa did a lot of construction work, building houses with my uncle, um, picking up brick, taking trash to the dump load, stuff like that. So I think something like that was always instilled in me as a youngster as far as hustling, right? Yeah. So and everything that I do, whether, I mean, even if it's something to the extreme, there's always some, some type of hustle behind it. I'm always going to have the hustle mentality and whatever I see. Um, that's just how I've always been, you know what I mean? Whether Whatever it be. I grew up playing baseball, so we hustled. You know, to my cutting hair, everything that I did, I put some type of hustler mentality behind it. But definitely I could say that I got that from my dad and my grandpa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, but one of the things that I love that you also preach is also, like, not killing yourself or working yourself to death. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that you talk about, like, if you, you know, if you're in the barbershop seven days a week, like... It's going to get to a point where you're asked out. Like, you don't want to be in the shop mm -hmm. no more. So I saw you were like, travel, invest in yourself, do your taxes, like, mm -hmm. find ways to, to invest the money that you're making in Barber, like, in something parallel that you like, Um, you know, putting your money in other different investments, yeah, you know, definitely. because you don't always, you're not always going to want to cut hair for the rest of your life. Yeah, nah, definitely. I was always one to not want to get stuck behind a barber chair. So I remember myself always moving to different sides of towns because I just had, I would go to different sides of towns because I have certain clientele. So my, my, like my dream at that age was, um, I didn't, I wasn't in barber college yet. I was on my way to go to barber college. Um, and the way I went to barber college was I had a motorcycle accident, sold the bike. And then with that, we went to barber college. So that was like another little area of my life where it was like, Hey, what you gonna do, player? Sit your ass down. And I had a few months to kind of figure it out. I was cutting hair at the time too, but I wasn't all the way like going to barber college and stuff like that. So that that definitely um, stopped me and made me realize a, a lot of stuff. And then that's when I went to barber college and I started doing my thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that it's definitely been. Uh, something that I was like, yo, I cannot stay behind a chair, so I got to, I wanted to build clientele in Southwest, the North Side, the East Side, all, all, all sides of town, so I was everywhere with it, I was just bouncing around, I was bouncing around back and forth, I can't lie, like, there'll be days that I'll be in the Southwest for four hours, then I'll drive to downtown for two hours, just knocking out certain clientele that I had. Cause I just didn't want to be in the shop seven days a week. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And I think that happens a lot nowadays with people that come out of barber college. Because you come out of barber college wanting to be in the best barber shop. You know what I mean? So there's a difference between wanting to be in the best barber shop and wanting to be in a barber shop that you could grow and be around people that could teach you certain things. Yeah. If that makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. So luckily for me, I was in a barber shop that I was able to get taught certain things. And every time I strayed away, I was able to get like get your ass back over here type yeah. stuff. You know what I mean? But yeah. nowadays, a lot of people don't have that. So once they once they stray away, they stray away for a while, and a lot of them don't come back. And I've seen it happen a lot. Yeah. But yeah, so definitely always moved around. I never wanted to get stuck behind a barber shop. I mean, behind a barber chair, traveling. I was traveling when I was eighteen years old, just different places, and back and forth to small little tours, going to shows, going to cut people's hair, stuff like that. 
Definitely. Yeah. And so speaking of moving around, we were talking about how opportunity needs preparation. And so in your intro, I introduced you as Monster's first official barber. Um, how, first of all, what is monsters first official barber mean does that mean that you cut the hair for the people that monster sponsors and let's talk about the story of how that even happened like that opportunity so we'll start how that opportunity happened um it was something that i knew that i could happen but at the same time it was different because at that time a lot of barbers were going towards getting sponsored by products whether it was a pomade a gel or any type of product, whether it was a comb, a sponge, something like that, right? I seen a lot of traffic that way, right? Cool. Not saying that I couldn't go that way when I could but have. it was, like, saturated. Definitely yeah. saturated. And at that time, that's when barbers started becoming cool, you know what I mean? So I had a good friend of mine named Moy, B-Boy Moy. Uh, shout out to my brother. He was already actually sponsored by, my, by Monster. He created a whole B-Boy program behind Monster. Killed it. Um, he took me out of Houston, my first flight to L.A. I want to say it was in 2011, I believe. Um, not knowing where I was going, not knowing what was going to happen, but like, the, like we talked about earlier, staying ready, right? So definitely, I packed my shit. I took my clippers everywhere I went. You know what I mean? We landed in L.A., things started kicking off, and every city that I would hit with him, I had people in town, so I was already booking appointments on the flight so when i landed i was hitting different hotels where i was meeting with different people cutting their hair um a lot of the people that were around him that were with monster picked that up behind me they they were like bro this guy they come boom 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 he's always moving around boom 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 so man i found myself at monster headquarters when we were in la right and before we went over there i remember in the hotel room i said i'm taking my shit with me Somebody's getting a haircut in Monster Headquarters. You were manifesting. Yeah, definitely. I had the shit planned out. I said, don't let nobody ask me for a haircut while I'm in this bitch, because I'm finna go down. <laughs> Fast forward a couple hours later, I was in Monster Headquarters, like on the fourth floor, cutting a big name person in their office. Um, and I want to say ever since then, the shit got sealed. I mean, I still put in work and stuff like that, but it was just that opportunity being ready. Yeah. So have I had not had my stuff with me, I would have missed out on that opportunity. Yep. Not saying that it would have not happened, but it was something that definitely sealed it. Like, bro, like, you know what I mean? Because after that, bef before we even came home to Houston, like, it was a big talk in the headquarters. Like, yo, so-and-so, boom, yo, we go check him out. Boom, 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 boom. And it just became one of those things. Um, definitely, that was a start to the monster. I just, I started building relationships with them. Um, then stuff started growing from there. I signed a deal in 2011, I believe. 2011, yeah, I believe. same year, yeah. Yeah, like that, like a little, a little after that year, you know yeah. what I mean? I signed a deal with them, crazy. Um, and what, so what did that deal entail? Like that deal entail that was, I signed, a, I signed up, I signed a personality contract with them for me being who I was, just being me, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um... Yeah, it was crazy. It was something new. It was, it was something new. Like they, like all right. So we got a barber we're sponsoring now. Like it was something new. We were just trying to figure out different avenues that we could place me. And you know, we knew like cutting hair was urban, was hip hop. It was a culture. So they had a tour. It was called Dub Show Tour. One of the world's biggest car show shows ever with the big lineup. Talking like big names like Gucci Man, like. Um, yo, Gotti, crazy names were on this lineup, right? Yeah. So they were like, yo, this is the event, this is the event. So when I was hitting these events, I was catering to a lot of the artists that were on, on the tour, a lot of um, BMX riders because they would be doing shows, and then I got cool with a bunch of, like, tour managers. And also, my thing was, you're like you said earlier, I was thinking ahead of time. So who do I need to quit, get cool with, the artist or the tour manager? Nine times out of ten, the, the artist is moving manager. around. Yeah. Tour manager, boom, boom. Hey, I'll be in your city next month. I'll be on this day. If you need my services, let me know. Boom, boom, boom. I was always ahead of the game like that. Yeah. I was already knowing what hotel they were going to be at, so I would always reach out. Yo, I'll be in your city next week. If you need my services, let me know. Boom. That was always, like I said, that goes back to them knowing, like, yo, this guy's about his shit. Come on with it. Boom. So, I was, so I, like, that goes back to me telling you I was already hitting the city knowing who I was going to miss with outside of doing my monster stuff there. Yeah. So I was already creating other avenues, already getting paid for monster being there. But now what? I, 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 sound like, I found like uh, other avenues, like I said, and I was already cutting hair outside of the monster stuff too there. 
Yeah. And and so on this podcast, we talk about the wins and losses mm. on the road to success. But that is like a major, major win because, you know, a lot of people want opportunities, but they themselves are not prepared to mm-hmm. receive them. Mm-hmm. They themselves are not ready to like when this is something super basic, but like even having a resume mm-hmm. and having a good resume. Yeah, definitely. You know, t- like you want to apply for all of these jobs, but like, does your resume like really represent what you've done? Or like, if an opportunity comes, do you have your resume resume ready to just send it off? Like mm-hmm. small little things like that. And same thing how how you say that you know you're already thinking like, what can you do? I try to think of like that too when I travel or like when I'm in like a different city. I'm like, who's Who's doing what in the city? Like, who can I interview here? Like, what are they working on? You know, how can I tell the story of the city? Like, always just kind of, like, thinking in future tense and setting yourself up for, like, what you're going to do in the future, you know, related to what you what you want to do. Mm-hmm. And, and manifesting. Mm, manifesting is a big, big, big deal when it comes to, like, your dreams. Mm-hmm. I have a, a whiteboard in my room, and, like, I keep a lot of, I have a vision board and I also have like a, a, a like a whiteboard where I just write like different goals, different things. I that got I that want. too. You do? It's a, uh, it's like a little dry erase board. Yeah. And it's like, if, I think I'm the only person that could read it because my, <laughs> my handwriting is crazy. But I, I just recently started doing that, like writing down stuff because just recently stuff's been starting to pick up on my end and, uh, like I, I do forget some stuff sometimes or I got to, so I like, as soon as I walk in, I have like, all right, so this collaboration this day or this this day or I'm doing this this day. That way I can at least, so as soon as I walk in my house, it's like, boom, right there. So, yeah, that's definitely a, I never used to do that, but it helps a lot. It does. Definitely helps a lot. It does, and you end up looking back and you're like, damn, you scratch off like the things that, you know, yeah. you have already accomplished mm-hmm. or maybe some that you want to get to. It's funny how that works, though, when you're like constantly manifesting and seeing your vision. So, you just said the word collaboration. Um, we have a couple of collabs that you're working on that I want to talk about. Um, so let's talk about first the Urban Flower collab that you were talking cool. about. All right. So right now I'm, should say, in the works with uh, Urban Flower. Shout out to my boy Manny. Um, we have something that we will be doing soon as far as uh, Urban Flower is a, is a CBD place, location, dispensary where you get all your needs whether it be from creams to gummies to the whole nine yards, yeah. edibles and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So um, I linked up with him with one of my homies named Donkey Boy. Um, I actually linked up with him maybe like two months ago. And um, the vibes, like the energy, the energy was there, the vibes were there. We started talking and uh, so now we got something that's going to be coming soon and I definitely think it's going to be something different. Not not saying that it's something that hasn't been done, but it's definitely going to be something different for me being a barber and it going with my like my merchandise and my streetwear that I do. So that'll be with the the brand that I have, which is Sucio. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. Um, I really think it's going to be definitely something different, but definitely something that would definitely help me um, grow in my brand. You know what I mean? So when I when I first talked about it with him, it was like, yo, this is about to happen. This is about to happen. You know what I mean? And um, we had a talk and stuff like that. And I still trip out about not only that, but other things that I do. Because it's like, sometimes I find myself in positions and I'm like, how, how did I get here? Yeah. Or how is this happening? You know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm definitely um, looking forward to that collaboration with Urban Flower. It's going to be crazy. I'll definitely keep y'all in tune with that whenever that's coming up. Yeah. That way y'all could definitely be a part of it. Yeah, and for sure, and the Donkey Boy print stuff too. Oh, too yeah. Long. So right now, shit, matter of fact, you These are go, two separate collabs. Yeah, right? these are two separate collabs. Urban Flower is one thing, Donkey yeah. Boy is something else. Who's so, the artist? So my boy Donkey Boy is an artist out of Houston, and... um. He's been working with me, helping me do a lot of things with my brand. Like graphics and, and stuff? Graphics and stuff, and just giving me uh, advice and different things. Um, so he and I dropped a print, and it's actually in his store right now, the Donkey Boy store, and um, I'll put that on my Instagram. But we started doing a pre-order, and it's all the way to Friday, and it's a canvas print. It's crazy fire. Like, it's, it's really fire. Yeah. So that's up on his store right now for grabs, pre-order until Friday. Um, it's actually doing pretty good right now for yeah. it being up for pre-order for two days right now. So we're expecting the numbers to be really high on this one. Yeah. Um, we'll be doing, we already have people from out of town, like, you know, placing but, orders and stuff like that. 
this is what I'm telling you though like your brain works in the mm. craziest ways like what made you even think like as a barber I'm gonna collab with an artist and we're gonna drop a print what does barbering have anything to do with artists you, yeah. you're both artists you get me S- but yeah, that's so, what I'm saying about how you are yeah so I mean at the, at the end of the day I, I'm an artist myself yeah. a barber you know what I mean I yeah. consider myself an artist um, when it comes to cutting hair, definitely creativity comes Hell in play. Yeah. So, like my cre- like my creativity side of me is like like I think and think and think. Um, a lot of the people that I do collaborations with is either I have a relationship with them or we just be we just build a bond together and then it just grows from there. Yeah. And that comes from just being real and just being who you are. Um, but this collaboration is definitely different. Uh, for me being a barber and me being able to do a canvas print, you know what I mean? That's crazy right now because those are really in prints and canvases and just art in general. Yeah. So to for him to be able to create something and the the what we got from this, if you if they if y'all see the the image that we did, it's a uh, um, back in the day they used to have the Looney Tune T-shirts mm-hmm. and they were all decked out like with the old school um, gear with the hat with the um, with the um, how do you call the uh, the pants they go like this oh, overalls, overalls with yeah. the overalls backwards and stuff so it's basically the Bugs Bunny and the Tasmania but he switched the Tasmania uh, the Tasmania to guy BMW. yeah into the pig face and then his into the donkey face and put them together oh. so we dropped the print first and then eventually we'll drop the shirt the so on yeah house. but That's we'll be so having cool. a local pickup in Houston we haven't set the, the date yet for it but I'm expecting this to be pretty good and this just goes off of like um the people i know the people he knows people that support us you know what i mean just the houston love that we've been getting lately it's yeah. it's crazy yeah. you know what i mean so like i was houston shows love houston shows love i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get it right but i'm gonna be real i do get a lot of love from other cities too yeah but because i put in work in other cities you know what i mean yeah. so so like when i was able to see that some of my homies from miami some of my homies from la some of his homies from new york were buying it it was like yo well we shipping this this way this way so that's it's pretty cool you know what i mean yeah and just the collaborations in itself i thought it would be somebody something that would be cool you know what i mean a canvas a print take a lot of people back to the old days a lot of people like oh shit i remember that that's fine that's crazy i want to get that so yeah definitely i hope everything goes good on that end and uh, like i said this friday is a cutoff day for pre-order so make sure y'all go get that you heard it here first yeah for sure (laughs) so let's talk about your brand sucio Mm -hmm. what's the sucio what uh like what made you even think of that okay what what, tell me everything about it okay do you consider yourself a sucio like what is this about so the the way Sucio came about when I was heavy, when I was coming in cutting hair, I was doing a lot of designs at the time, right? So I had a hashtag that was called Sucio Cuts. So in Spanish, Sucio being do- dirty, nasty, whatever. So in our generation, I took it like Sucio being dope, sick. ill, yeah. sick, nasty. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, okay. so my hashtag was Sucio Cuts, but in my mind, I was thinking nasty, ill, dope cuts. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, so it's just something that stuck around, and people called me by the name Sucio, boom, 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 like that. I always felt like everybody had a little Sucio in them or Sucia in them, but at the same time, it still oh, had yeah. that. I'm a Sucia yeah. in the podcast scene. You better. There you go. So what I mean? So that's how I always felt about it. You know, he's a Sucio when he paints because he's dope, nasty, ill with it. So yeah. that's where that came from as a hashtag when I was first coming up. Um, I had the design. That design was also done by Donkey Boy to himself. And it was just something that I wrote with. I printed a shirt in 2009, my first shirt that I printed black and white. And to this day, I sold over like 1,700 of those shirts. Damn. A couple of years of that. Um, it's crazy because uh, I didn't know the numbers until my boy showed me. I was like, damn, that's wild. I sold, the first time I did a drop with Donkey Boy, I think I sold over 400 of them out the trunk of my car within the span of time. Um, and a lot of this is stuff that people don't really know, but if you have my stuff, you know, because I don't do an online uh, online pickup or none of that. Everything is out the trunk. Like, so I like have, even like back in the days, people yeah, make just like that. I, I don't know. I don't know. But eventually, I'm going to have a site coming. Definitely, I'm going to have a site coming. But I'm just riding the wave right now because of the fact that like it's been a trend. Like 
like people already kind of know my people know when I'm talking about so it's more like of a like an exclusive type thing but definitely lately I've been coming out with a bunch of different stuff that I will be dropping and I do feel like it's necessary for me to have a website or something that people could go to and buy the stuff too you know what I mean yeah. so eventually that would come up too but that's just how Socio came about yeah. and I decided to make it into a brand um I had a logo made and I mean shit I've it's been so taking gosh. it everywhere yeah I've been yeah. taking it everywhere with me I'm um I I'm like grateful that I have clients who have a bigger flat uh, platform than me that I'm able to you know hook them up with gear and stuff like that they could shout me out and stuff like that so I've been running Sucio for over eight nine years now the Instagram just got made just yeah. recently got made I haven't had the Instagram that long at all so no but I had no social media behind it at all it was all just in the hoods and stuff like that yeah yeah that's how I did it but you're also like a people person yeah so definitely it makes sense how you're like you know, doing this at the, like, back of the trunk. Yeah. And just, like, showing up and delivering to people. Mm -hmm, or definitely. Being like, where can I meet you to get this stuff? Well, I get, yeah, I get stuff uh, printed. Like, I do random drops, right? And, like, everything that I drop is 100 plus. I don't do 15 shirts, 20 shirts, none of that. Uh, that's, like, no cap. That's serious. Um, and I just happen to have a clientele, and I'm able to feed off a bunch of my clients. I'm able to feed off a bunch of the people that I know. A lot of people repost, a lot of people hashtag it or whatever. So it's been growing lately. Within the last two months, I've definitely seen a change in numbers in it. Um, and it's something that I'm definitely ready to put a lot more energy into. So I've been getting a lot of stuff done on the back end to get ready for it for this summer coming up. I think, like, barbers are, like, the new renaissance, man. Because <laughs> barbers are the ones that, like... They they literally are a network. Mm -hmm. Like you, and I was I was thinking about this when I was thinking about you and interviewing you and all that stuff. Like barbers are literally like barbers can tell you what the people feel. Barbers can tell you the latest things that people are worrying about. Like the barber shop is like the cornerstone of the community. Mm -hmm. The barber, if you need a barber to, if you need like. I don't know, whatever, a guy that does graphic design. Oh, and you yeah. need a guy that does, you know, alcohol promotions. Al Everything. The barber is your network. Yeah. Yo, I, like, I, I want to say, like, I got a cousin named Tank, and, oh, my God, he has every connection in the world you could think about, right? Like, that's, that's like, my really good cousin. And um, being a barber, like... It's one of those things like, yo, June, he has to know a plumber. June knows a mechanic. June knows, you know what I'm talking about? And like sometimes I forget that we know these many people. But at the same time, I, I don't always reach out to the resources that I have because I've always been a person like, oh, I don't want to ask for help. You know yeah, what I'm talking about? Myself, but, yeah. but lately, I'm not going to lie, the resources have been getting hit up. I, yeah. I, I be taking advantage. Not advantage, but at the same time, like, yo. Yo, you know, scratch my back, I'll scratch your back, let's do this, whatever, right? Yeah. But definitely, we, I happen to know a lot of people. And I'm pretty sure every other barber happens to know a lot of people, too. Because yeah. you're not only dealing with, you know, you're dealing with all types of walk of life. Every every type of walks of life, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, from this side to that side, so it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. you saw me, like, sometimes I have a plumber, sometimes I have a doctor, sometimes, sometimes I have a millionaire, I have an artist, I have Sometimes I have athletes. a dope boy, sometimes, yeah, definitely, definitely, it's... It's different vibes, and uh, and I already know, like, it's crazy, so I'll be like, all right, so my 2 o'clock is this person. Like, my mind already picks up on the conversation we left last, so I'm already thinking, like, oh, I wonder how this went with him. Oh, how was his trip, or how's his daughter doing, or how's his son doing, or, oh, I knew he was talking about who was going to be going to this event, boom, 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 so the conversation just picks up. I definitely have a different, I definitely have different relationships with some of my clients. Some of my clients I do talk to more outside the shop. Some of them I have a more of a relationship than others. But definitely, I'm able to, uh, like, I have a relationship with all of them, whether, yeah. you know what I mean, on that end. Are barbershops, um, actually, no, are barbers therapists? Definitely. I definitely think so. I hear a thousand stories a week. Um, <laughs> How do you deal with all of that? I don't know. I, I don't know myself. <laughs> I kind of think about it. Like, like, I see a person and the story pops up in my head, if that makes sense. Or I see, or if I could read, or I know, like, they're coming in, I already know, like, Yo, my boy was telling me about this situation. Yo, let me see what's going on. How's it going? Whatever it may be. Because I definitely have people come in. Um, yeah, I could, I could tell when one of my clients has a different energy in the chair, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, and a lot of times, a lot of people come to the barbershop willing to and wanting to get stuff out. Because it's a, it's a place that they could, um, they know that 
they can let whatever out with the barber and knowing that it's going to stay between them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, I definitely get a lot of stories, man. I've I've had crazy stories. What's one of the craziest? Oh, uh, man. Or just something recently that you heard that you are like... <sighs> Shit. I, it could be a good or bad. Let me see. Let me see what's one. Um, yo, so one of my boys, real good people of mine, um, I'm not going to say no names, no, but no. Uh, he, he's been going through... Let me see. Um, I guess relationship, relationship stuff. Uh, and his stories, his stories are crazy. <laughs> it's always an up and down type story. Um, and I remember it was going downhill. I remember it was going downhill, man. And uh, I could tell by the vibe. I knew what was going. I knew what was going on. He would talk to me, and at the same time, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm not in that situation. I don't know what to say about that situation, but he's talking to me for a reason. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So it's my job to, um, how can I say, um, hear him out, yeah. uh, give my opinion, and what I would do if I was in that situation. Because mm-hmm. a lot of times they don't, they don't, they don't let it out, or they don't know. They just keep it in. So for them being able to hear from another person's, you know, perspective, uh, it does help them out a lot. Um, but not only with just that, man. I, man, I'm able to steer kids in the right direction right now because. I've had a lot of them like, yo, going left and just me being who I am or them being able to come to the shop or wherever wherever I'm at to talk to me, like look for me. It, it's it's uh, something different, you know, someone like, yo, you at the shop, let me, holla, let me come holla at you and I already know what they're coming with, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I do honestly think that it's, uh, it's up to me to be that voice in that ear. Yeah. Because if it's not me, then I don't know what will happen because I've had, had I, I have had situations where I wasn't able to give advice or do something and shit went left. Damn. Now, if I was there and I was able to do something, I don't know how things would have turned out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, definitely, definitely uh, one of those situations that we are therapists. I hear all type of stories. Everybody needs somebody. Yes, I everybody needs somebody. Like, what people think. You can't do everything mm-hmm. alone. And honestly, you shouldn't have to. No, definitely. Like, you need... I, I know, like... You know, recently moving here and me not, like, really going to, like, you know, having my salon or, like, trying to figure out how to do my nails and stuff like that. I've been having to do this stuff myself and spend mm-hmm. a lot more time with myself. Mm-hmm. But um, thank God I have my, my best friends. I have my mom. You know, I have certain people that I could, like, have an outlet with. Yeah. And everybody needs that, yeah. you know? Because so, if not, you just build it up in you. You're and, building and that you shit build up. that shit up, and one day that's just gonna pop. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And everybody pops a different way. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. it's definitely something that um, that therapists, yeah, barbers are a big therapists. Uh, able to be a people person, able to keep a conversation up, and being able to be trusted by your client is big. You know what I mean? For yeah. them to be able to come to you and maybe spill some shit that they ain't told nobody. Maybe you haven't even told their wife, their kids, their family. You might be the first one to know, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you're definitely going to be that spark to like, all right, cool. Let's see where we're going to steer this way. Even with some of the kids that I cut nowadays, I a lot of them grow up with no, 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 um, nobody to look up to, no, no mom and dad. Figures, they're yeah. getting dropped off at the shop. I've been cutting them since they were kids. Now they're 17, 18, 19, doing shit that I'm like, oh, shit. You know what I mean? But they don't have that guidance in life. So sometimes they look for that one person, you know, it's mine. a lot of times it's their barber or it's a, a homie of them or whatever it may be. But I definitely could say that I'm a big homie to a lot of kids that are coming up right now for sure. Yeah. I also think there's something to be said that um, isn't really spoken about. And if it is, it's spoken about like in a negative light. But like um, men, just because they're men doesn't make them any less like susceptible or sensitive to like the problems of the world. Like mm-hmm. we sometimes put men on these pedestals that they have to be strong, that they can't cry, that they can't feel no. weak, that whatever. Yo, there's something to be said about a brotherhood or a barber shop or having a mentor or having someone to support you mm-hmm. in your community and someone that looks like you, someone that can understand like the problems that you have growing up or whatever the case is, mm-hmm. you know? And I think that like, the barber shop is an example of that, of like a brotherhood within, like you know, the male species, yeah. like the male community. Definitely a you brotherhood. Know? Definitely, it's definitely a brotherhood. Uh, like at the shop that I'm at right now, I have a, a one of the little homies that are in it right now. His name's Omar, and I've been cutting Omar since ooh, he was in 
like maybe middle school going to high school and i remember the times he was cutting hair he wanted to cut hair he'll come to the shop we'll talk you know i would just let him know like yo you know you're finishing college and he wanted to cut hair at the shop and i'm like yo give it time give it time i'm gonna I'm I'm position you and i'm gonna be able to get you in the shop because at the, that time that wasn't my shop i was working for my boy birdo and um and i was like yo all right and we were waiting for somebody and some some guy was about to leave so i was getting him ready and was he ready for that opportunity? And that goes back to us being ready for the opportunity. Yeah, being yeah. prepared. I gave him that fucking call. He was ready. He left the shop that he was at and came the next day and set up. And um, being able to see him flourish, it's crazy. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, so being able to put people in position to do bigger and better things. You know it's what rewarding. Mean? It's Fuck rewarding yeah. to see it's people win. Crazy. Hell yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, you know, to, just the small things, like... Bro, seeing him get his first vehicle, seeing him buy his first house, like, pff, that's crazy within the matter of, like, a two, three-year span. Yeah. You know what I mean? Seeing his work ethic, his grind, pff, he, he did it, all that, you know, tomorrow, yeah. all it took was for somebody to be able to, like, yo, all right, I got you, boom, boom, boom. I already knew when I positioned him, I already knew what time it was. He was going to go up from there. It was going to be a wrap. It was yeah. going to be a wrap. Or I could have been that guy that'd be like, oh, no, nah, man, you know what I'm talking about? Just a keep hater. doing <laughs> keep doing your thing on that side of town. You're going to be blah, blah, blah. And I could have did that, and I would have never seen that happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I already kind of knew because it happened with me. You know, it's funny because I had this mentor. Her name is Alexandra. And I always tell her, like, not only do I respect her as, like, my mentor, she's almost like my big sister, like a really great friend. And there was something that she taught me, which was she gave, she also gave me opportunity, you know, and she wasn't this type of boss because she was my boss at the time. That's how we met. Um, you know, when you see like the spark or the fire in someone younger than you, and if, you know, your boss can position you in a place where like, they don't want you to grow because they're scared you're going to outdo them yeah. or they're going to position you and give you the skills because they're secure in who they are, what they know, what they got. And they just set you up for success. Mm. And, like, that was something I learned with her that I was like, man, thank you so much because any opportunity, any extra trainings, any advice, like, even I remember, you know, she even wanted me to take a class on, like, how to, like, write, like, professional and, like, like better emails. Mm -hmm. Like, just so I could better my communication. Mm -hmm. And at first I was like, oh, my God, like, am I not professional? Am I not writing good emails? Yeah. Like, whatever. She's like, nah, it's just... There's a way that you talk when you're in corporate. Yeah, Just, definitely. You know, like, I didn't grow up talking corporate. Mm -mm. I didn't grow up knowing, you know, office stuff. Like, everybody has to learn somewhere. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Man, that was... So, when I signed with Monster, I had to learn all that. You got to remember, I was coming from the southeast of Houston, Texas. Never thought in my life that I'd be working with a crazy A worldwide brand, yeah. Crazy. Like, you know, to my I never, never thought that. So, yo, the emails coming in, invoices... Uh, communicating different emails, remembering stuff, all that I had to learn because I didn't, I really didn't know that. So I would have to like, ah, oh, remember, remember, remember. All right, do this, do that. Boom, boom, boom. And yes, a lot of people did help me out. You know, it's like my boy, like my boy Moy. Different people would help me like learn how to make an invoice or learn how to do this, learn how to shoot it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that, and that, I had to learn. It was like one of those things because I didn't know how to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can't be sitting here writing some emails is like what the hell is he talking about or whatever it may be yeah so yeah definitely always uh, to this day i take advice um like i mentioned my boy jay that i learned how to cut hair from in the beginning i told him on a I, we just shot this video not too long ago and on the video i was telling him like it was like my first time i ever told him i told him bro my dream was to always be like better than you you know what i mean yeah. S but not in a bad way you know what no, yeah. I, I wanted to take what he gave me and just perfect it, make it yeah, better and you know, make it and, at the, and at the same time, he was like, yo, yo, he was always like, you gotta go, go hard, go hard, go hard, go hard. So that was one of the things. And so like for the youngsters coming up under me, I want them to outdo me, of to course. go and create other stuff that, pff, so I could be like, yo, that you did that, how did you do that? You know, stuff like that. Yeah. So definitely, I, I, I want everybody that I mess with to be better than me. I think that's, that's the goal to sit back and be like, Damn, he surpassed me or he did that shit. He's on a whole nother level because that's what it should be, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Definitely. And um speaking of like wanting the next generation and people to be better, Clipper Beats Beasts. Mm -hmm. Um you started that platform almost to like unify the community, to like give like these underground bar uh, barbers like a place 
you know, uh, I know you also said that you also, like, there sometimes could be beef within the barber community. And it's mm. like, yo, we're going to leave all that bullshit to the side. And we're going to, like, we're a community. And so tell me about that and your vision for it and how have it been moving around. So I created that um, Clipper Beast at back, like, back in the day. That was another hashtag that I had, Clipper Beast. Everybody wants to be a beast. Everybody uses Clippers, Clipper Beast. But I was from the Southeast side, so I had a hashtag that was Southeast Clipper Beast. And that's, I had shirts made, and that's how I would walk around and go around wearing a shirt. You know what I mean? Um, Clipper Beast is basically a monthly gathering that I do to, you know, that's my, um, my monthly gathering that I do to promote barber culture. And I have these underground barbers come and be able to showcase their skills. Um, it's a monthly thing. I normally do it every Friday. That's my interaction with Monster and with the community. Uh, networking night, free monsters, food, DJ, stuff like that. What I normally do is I try to keep it like a New York cipher, um, small pack. Uh, I pick three barbers out of Houston to come out and compete. We give them a category. We have a judge. We give them a time limit to do it, and we let them do their things. Uh, I definitely handpick barbers that I know that have been doing their thing that are coming up right now who I see the fire in them, you know what I mean? Um, some are not ready when I call for them, you know what I mean? I understand that because it takes a lot to come out and battle, especially around cameras, especially around people, especially around the lights. Yeah. But I could definitely say that I have smashed, um, killed some beef from different sides of towns. Um, people come with their entourage. People come with their people. So therefore, I let them know whoever you bring your liable for, yeah. you know what I mean? Because things could get heated. And it's all good. It's part of the game. It is what it is. People want the bragging rights. People want to let it know. But at the end of the day, it's all love. We all unite. Uh, we're all under one roof. We're all barbers. We're all, I mean, even girls too. Girls come out. Cosmetology, hairstylists, people, network, you know, meet meet your, your, your local colleagues. Houstonian. Yeah, your local Houstonians. I mean, I meet people that I didn't even know cut hair there. You know what I mean? I give a cash prize out. Um, I have a sponsor, Miss Linda uh, Boucher's uh, supply, and she gives me like um, all the equipment, like stuff to for like first, second, and first, uh, first place. Um, cash out three hundred dollars, sometimes four hundred dollars. So you basically come do a haircut and win four hundred dollars. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. crazy though, but it, it's it's when I have them, it's like it's a different vibe. The energy is crazy because you see these these kids come out, you see them prepare for it, and sometimes I do crazy categories to where it, it involves like. You know, veterans in a game, like older people, you know what I mean? Yeah. So they come out with their people and they're ready. It's like a it's like a fight club. It's ready yeah. to go, you know what I mean? Yeah. You give them that three, two, one, and they do their thing. So yeah. it definitely brings the best out of, out of them. Uh, yeah, and it's something that a lot of people look forward to, and I look forward to growing it and building it more and more. Uh, I do definitely have a lot of stuff in the future with it that I plan on doing, so I can't wait to see where that comes to and play. That's so cool. You're nothing, and I don't mean you, but like as people, we're nothing with our, without our communities. Yeah, definitely. Like especially as people like you and me who we rely so much on our community. Mm -hmm. Like you always have to have those moments where you like tap back into people. You yeah, know? definitely, definitely. And like feed like your community, inspire them, mm -hmm. and and like give them stuff to like look forward to get to know each other who knows from all of those events that you've had like people that meet each other maybe collaborated for Definitely, something no. else it's a, to different barbershops network you know it's a fact and the only reason why i say it's a fact because of the hashtags and the tags that i get you know and i'm like so when i see that i'm like yo i was able to give them a platform to link up and now look at the shit they did you know what i mean yo. it's a good feeling you know what i mean because yeah. if if who says if I never had that, if they would have came across past, probably not. You know what I mean? Probably not because where I do these, I take these uh, these um, these clipper beads, those stuff. I take them to different barbershops around Houston. So I might be in the North Side one month. I might be in the Southwest one month. So at the end of the day, I'm able. I have people like yo. I appreciate you coming out to my barbershop. I appreciate you coming out to my hood. You know what I mean? So I get a lot of love on that end too. As far as like yo, I, I appreciate you bringing that over here. We needed that over here. We needed these barbers to get motivated. You know what I mean? Because a lot of shops, they're just there seven days a week, six days a week grinding. So when you bring something out, this it takes them out their comfort zone. It allows them to do something like, oh shit, like a little something bar. Something excited. Yeah, about. definitely. You know what I mean? And yeah. within that, you know, it's not that long. I normally do it from seven to ten, seven to nine. But within those few, those few couple of hours, like that person is able to be who they really want to be. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. definitely. And maybe who knows? Like you could take this to another city yeah. or like another so, state. So, man, speaking of that, that's already in the that's already in the play. Yeah, that's done deal. Yeah, 
So this year, 21, 2021 and 2022, Clipper Beast will be coming to a city near you. I'll be taking a tour and picking different winners in different states and flying them back to Houston at the end of the year to compete. Is definitely. Miami going to be in there? Definitely, definitely. I got to go to Miami. Shout out to my boy Zeku. He got some unlock over there. So yeah. as soon as I touch down, he knows. Do you know what hood he happens to be uh, in Miami? He's, oh, shit. I'm, you're going to get me wrong saying it, but I know that when I go over there, he, he knows everywhere. Like, okay. Yeah, he he's he's kind of known over there. They know okay. what time it is. But There's I'm not really exactly. There's some really good like, uh, barbershops in Alopado. Okay, cool. Like the Dominican neighborhood. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. I remember going to like Little Havana and all that. He Little took me. Havana. Oh, man. Calle oh, they're going to kill me for this, but I can't even remember my boy's shop over there. The name, damn, but he got it on lock. Yeah. Yeah, his barber, Zeke's barber, got it on lock. Over yeah. There. Yeah, crazy. Let's talk about the most memorable haircut you've ever given. Uh, the most memorable haircut I ever given was uh, shout out to my boy Easy, Easy Access. He's from Houston, too. Um, he put me, oh man, there's plenty of them, but I'm just going to specifically say this one, uh, Trey Songs and House of Blues. Okay. Um, the reason why it's memorable because of the fact that when I set him in the chair, he said, I'm going to ask you one question and one question only, what do you see in my hair? I come through his hair, he had a little swirl in front. I told him, oh yeah, you got on the right hand side of your forehead, you got a swirl. He said, you could cut my hair. Oh, shit. And then I knocked it out the way, and then... Shh. What do you mean a swirl? Like a cowlick? So, for, like, African-Americans, you know, when they have waves and stuff, if you can't cut it a certain way, because if you cut it a certain way, you'll plug them. So, he had really crazy waves, but he had, like, a cowlick, which was, like, a, like, a, um... Un how do you say this? Definitely. Un right here on corner side. Since his hair was a little puff, he asked me the question. I had to calm it down, and when I told him where, what, like, he didn't even have to tell me, go ahead, start. <laughs> and that was crazy for me, too, that, that day, too, because... I remember how it made you kind of like dust your shoulders off, like have one. Yeah, it was one of those things, like damn. And then again, I was like, yo, I'm freaking cutting Trey songs. And this was like at the time where uh, he's booming all the time, but at this time he was booming, booming. Yeah. And um, and then from there it just kind of went left. Like I found myself messing with my boy Easy, and he would connect me with a lot of people, like. Damn. Kendrick Lamar, Trey Songz, oh, a lot of crazy people. That's so dope. Yeah, shout out to him though too for opening the door for me. Uh, he opened the door, introduced me to Trey The Truth, which is from Houston, a rapper from Houston. Um, and I was cutting Trey's hair for a while, and then they just started linking me up with certain people that came in town, and that was a little phase that I went through back then where I was cutting a bunch of little celebrities too. Yeah, and um, who's your dream client or celebrity, uh, dead or alive? That you'd want to cut their hair? Man, let me see. If I could cut one person's hair, dead or alive, I'm going to be real with you. We call my brother, my brother, we call him Pun, Big Pun. So to be honest, if I, if Big Pun was alive right now, RFP Big Pun, I think I would want to cut his hair. I'm not going to lie. You know what I mean? I think I would want to cut Big Pun's hair. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of other people too, but I think Big Pun, if he was alive, I would have definitely would have loved to cut his hair and just see what he had to say you know what I mean but that goes from because like we call my brother Big Pun too yeah. so that I think it that'd be like kind of sentimental yeah I think that'd be kind of dope if my brother was there and Big Pun was there boom boom knocked it out the way but definitely I think Big Pun and so right now people can find you at Southern Comfort Barbershop yeah right? Southern Comfort Barbershop you definitely can find me there that's on the southeast side of Houston Texas off of Monroe and Fuquay okay mm -hmm. and like what services are you like most known for oh sh um I run by appointments. I mean, services, anything you need, definitely from one to ten. Yeah. Um, lately, it's been it's been crazy because you know uh, I've been moving around lately. I'm I'm finna start traveling again. So um, that goes by that goes back to the wins and losses. Yeah. It was a win to gain monster, but it's a process. So you know what happens is you start to lose clientele. You're out of town all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's not that you don't want to cut the hair, but I mean I might be out of town one weekend and we book for the next weekend, and then I get that call and I might have to be out. You know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of times, a lot of my clients will wait for me if it's a weekend thing, Thursday to like Monday. But um, there's a few of them that I'm able to like you know shoot certain ways. But then there's some that just fall through the cracks. But that becomes that's one of the losses I would say when you gain something big like that. But it's all it's all part of the journey. It is what it is. You know what I'm talking about? Because yeah. now. I cannot be at the shop 24-7 mm -hmm. because I do other things, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now, if I didn't have the other things that I created for other op like other avenues, then I would have to be at the shop. But now that I'm able to have other avenues to make income, I don't find myself at the shop 24-7 like I used to be. Yeah, like mm -hmm. my mom says, um, perder para ganar no es perder. That's what mm -hmm. she says. It means like um, to um, when you lose stuff to win some, it's not really a loss. Yeah, definitely. You know? But that, uh, that was definitely big in the process. Man, I had a... But, I mean, it's understandable, you know what I mean? Because I remember there was times where, like, I would, 
be like, yo, I gotta take a flight. And I told this guy because I had this booking, boom, boom, boom. But like, I'm in the piss. I'm like in a situation where like, bro, I'm finna catch a flight to go over here. It's not that I want to cut your hair, but hey, this I is what's happening right now. A lot of them understand. A lot of them been with me since the jump. A lot of them remember me telling you, man, one day I'm gonna be sponsoring my monster. You yeah. know what I mean? A lot of them are are have been through the journey with me, and we talk about it a lot too. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, definitely that's one of the things like that. But I'm definitely not cutting hair like I used to before. You know, yeah. so not not full throttle, definitely not. So how much does a June the Barber cut cost? Oh uh, shit. You do an appointment with me at Southern Comfort Barbershop, it starts at forty five dollars. Okay. Um I don't do house calls anymore, but I do have A list clientele and that price does up. Um anytime I leave the shop and pack my Pelican case, it's definitely for a bag. Uh I don't want to say the price just because I know people would probably be, ah, it is right, but the people that pay, they know what's up. Yeah. So it's definitely definitely a price to do that. Um, I mean, convenience nowadays equals money. Hell yeah. Why, why do you think Uber Eats, DoorDash, yeah. everything you know, I find myself spending $40, $50 on Chick-fil-A. It doesn't cost that much, but it's convenience. <laughs> I don't got to go nowhere for it. So yeah, so definitely, definitely. It depends what service you're getting too, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I do have people that I, I you know, definitely get a bag from yeah i mean it also it also becomes one of those things where when you put in the time like you charge accordingly i read a quote some somewhere that said like oh um it didn't have to do a haircut but it had to do with just like oh you know you go visit the doctor and you gotta spend like a hundred dollars for like the five minutes that you go and see the doctor for it let's just say Maybe this isn't the best example, but, like, you're not paying for, like, the five minutes. No. You, what you're really paying for is, like, all of that knowledge that yeah. this person is bringing definitely. in the five minutes mm-hmm. that they're going to give you, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, definitely. So, it's, you know, you charge what you got to charge. Yeah. And that's it. And the ones that will pay will get their June the barber cut, Yeah, you know? definitely. There's a million barbers around yeah. the world, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, there's plenty of money to be made. I guess it's all how you... Um, how you promote yourself and how you carry yourself. I mean, people are going to respect and but well, people are going to respect your value and they're going to, you know, respect that if they really know what's up. And I've definitely have put a lot, a lot of work into this shit. Okay. So, I mean, it's okay for me. It's okay. I could accept somebody say, oh, man, that's too much. That's it's out cool. of my budget. Yeah. And I understand that. You know, tomorrow, I'm, it's, it is what it is. You know, yeah. tomorrow, I might not be the barber for you. You know, tomorrow, I have somebody that I could send you to, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. never going to just leave you there. You know what yeah. I mean? But yeah, it wasn't ever like that. I mean, I mean, shit. I remember charging five dollars for a haircut. Yeah. I remember charging ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty, forty. You know what I mean? And yeah. it goes on. You know what I mean? That's just how life goes, and it's gonna eventually keep going up. Are I mean, you still teaching? Um, I saw you rep Gold Star Barber Academy. So Gold Star Barber Academy belongs to my my friend, a real close friend of mine, Mike, killing the game. You know, someone doing big things in the barber industry, and he's out of Bryan, Texas College Station. Every time that I go over there, I build a relationship with his students in his school. So I always look forward to going over there and just chatting it up with them, talking to them. You know, sometimes they have a lot of questions. I help them out, do little stuff at the shop. But I've been building a relationship with his kids and being able to talk to them, being able to be there. Matter of fact, some of his students were battling this week too. So I made sure I made time while they were battling. There was two girls that were battling, upcoming barbers, fresh. I think they're still in high school. So I made it a point to... When they were bar- when they were doing a battle, to walk up to them, you know, give them some tips, let them know what was going on, let them know the time, whatever it may be, just because I knew that it was the first time and I knew that feeling. I remember having that feeling doing the first battle, being nervous, being scared. So being able to have somebody, I didn't have nobody next to me like saying anything. So I knew I was gonna be a help helping them out, and I was with my boy Justin too. So I was able to like be able to help them all out at the same time but definitely mike man oh boy mike he's killing the game right now though. Yeah. like he is killing the game and uh i respect him for that and me being able to come out to college station them showing me love and stuff like that is something that i really really enjoy yeah so um are there any future events that you have coming up that you want to like let people know of or anything or should they just kind of like tune into your your social media? Right? Yeah, tune into Clipper Beats at Clipper Beats definitely because I will be having a lot coming up with Clipper Beats. Uh, a lot will be coming up within the next month, different locations that you could attend these events. I also plan on adding vendors to these events and so on and so on. So definitely like that. I plan on going to the barber colleges in Houston, um, taking this to their their schools as well, letting the kids, the barber kids, you know, have fun, compete, and do stuff like that. 
also uh, be able to talk to them and give them advice on uh, how to brand and how to, um, you know, just promote yourself and how to seek or how to even go about maybe getting sponsored by a corporation, whether it be a product, whether it be a pair of socks, whatever it may be. This year, I made it a goal of mine to get two other sponsors, you know what I mean? So I wrote 10 sponsors down that I love to get sponsored by and I'm knocking them out every other day. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what's up. And your personal IG handle for anyone that wants to stay in touch uh, with you? My personal IG is June the Barber. And then um, you can find me on Facebook, the same thing, June the Barber. I don't do Snapchat. I don't do Twitter. I just do June the Barber's yeah. Instagram. You know what I mean? I keep it plain and simple. Yeah, June, thank you so much for coming tonight. Yeah, no doubt. Thank you all for having me. Yeah, it's Appreciate been a pleasure. It. And yeah, I, no I'm really, I love that you tap into your community for sure. For sure. Thank you for sure, yeah. for sure, sure. That's all for today. Follow us on social media at Meet Them Mondays. I'm your host, Cristian Portilla, on AG at Call Her Cristian. If you like what you hear, then share an episode with your friends or to support the MTM mission. <coughs> Excuse me. Hit us up for sponsorships and ads. And please subscribe on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Leave us a review. You guys, it's free to help. And um, it's free to like just put your people on. So go ahead and share an episode. Peace. Yeah, yeah. Peace out. Are we still live? We're done?